Yeah. All right, so tell me what we learned last week. All right, so we learned about like different holes. Okay, is it holes on offense? Gaps on defense. Gaps on defense. And then, so offense, the odd jumpers are on the left. All right, well, come draw. Put the whole numbers up. So put the whole numbers up. <clears throat> All the numbers? Yeah, put the whole numbers up. Put them up. So okay, this was like gap one. This was like gap three. This was gap two. And this was gap four. And then we ran like forty. Well, you still got more. You still got more holes. Oh, so there's there's holes on the outsides too. Count how many people you got there. You're doing all right. Got a tailback, no question. Got a wing. So if there's if we're running 32 read and we have a defense that looks like this, who blocks who? The guard is the center block. The um, this guy right here? No. What? What? The yeah. The center blocks the. Uh, So the center block blocks the backside back. Okay, so all right, let's let's go back. Let's take a step back. Who's going to run the ball? The tail. Okay, possibly the tailback, right? Because it's a read. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's the three back, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So he's going through the two hole, which Wesley so aptly and correctly pointed out is right here. So he's going right there. So here's the bubble, the point of attack. Remember we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. What? Who blocks who? Because we can turn around and play the ball to anybody, but if nobody blocks anybody, we're in a lot of trouble. All right, so it's just right, so everyone blocks to the right of the lead? Okay, so we're we're running the ball this way, so which way do we want to push the defense? Left. All right, so I'm going to start you off giving you a hint. So we're going to, we're going to, center's going to block the nose tackle, okay? The guard's coming down in two, but then climb and get the backside back. 
And so this is something that we will work on in practice a double incline. Okay? So we will we'll work on that in practice. Okay? Now, who are we not blocking? Okay, so we're not blocking this guy. He's the reed, right? We're leaving him alone. So who's this guy going to block? The back. The on side back. Okay, remember, the side we're running to is the on side. Okay, the side we're not running to is the back side. Okay? So this guy's coming up, and we're going to seal that guy off right there. Okay? All right? Who's the wide up blocking? Corner. He's just taking the corner. All right? All right, what are we doing on the back side? Blocking the two corners. All right, so remember last week we said, can this guy make the play? No. No, no he can't make the play. So we're going to seal here. <coughs> Okay, we're gonna get that backer. Okay. All right. Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Good. Good. We're gonna get that backer, and we're gonna basically use this guard to go get somebody. Okay, to clear that. Okay. All right. We're gonna get. We're gonna turn. We're gonna have a mesh point right there. Okay. Where's what's the quarterback looking at? Right. He's looking at the read. Okay, so if he's looking at the read, so if he takes the snap and does this, and stares at that defensive end, and that defensive end runs towards him, what does he do? Pulls the mesh. He pulls it, right? And goes around it. Okay, so that's why we call it the read. Now if that defensive end stays right there, if he just steps across and holds his ground to see what's gonna happen, what's he gonna do? Nice. He's gonna hand the ball off. Okay, so he's going right up in here. Okay? All right? And then he's going to take the ball. He's going to continue his fake out that way. Because we want what we, what we want this guy to do is to always be wrong. Okay, so no matter what he decides to do, he's going to be wrong. Now, more often than not, what's going to happen is he's going to be coached that if the guy in front of him steps down, blocks down, he's supposed to step down. He's supposed to step in there. Okay. So we're, we're looking at him to see what he's doing. What we want him to do is to step down here and then we have the quarterback out and there's nobody out there, right? Because we're blocking this guy. The only guy that can get him is a free safety. Because remember, just like we're on defense, there's always one guy that we, we can't block. We don't have enough people because one guy's carrying the ball. Okay, so that's wing right 32 read. Now, it doesn't always have to be wing right, right? It can be wing left. So there's your hint. All right, so now somebody's gonna draw me wing left, 31 read. All right, you didn't get, Wes, you, you, you got to draw the, the offense, you got to, to draw the, the numbers. So now you're gonna to get to draw the formation this time. So if we call it wing left, 31 read. You can just do formation. Oh, let's just do. Yeah, give me room to put a defense in there too. So draw down there. That's pretty close. He's not there. Where is he? He's the wing, right? That's the guy that's the wing. So where's the wing? You're close. All right, so here, let me help you. So he's right there. He's the wing. Okay. All right, the reason, the reason this is called a wing is because that guy's the wing. He's off the guard, off the line. So we call that a wing. Okay? Good, very good, very good. All right, so. Just for not just didn't do a good job because you did, but I'm gonna space it out a little bit more so we can get we can see a little better. Okay, All right. you did a good job. All right. All right. Let's give us a defense. All right. 
They're big guys, all right guys. All right, how are we gonna block it, Jimmy? Who are we blocking? Who's blocking this? So it's the same as what we just saw, only backwards. Alright. Who's he blocking? <clears throat> You're almost perfect. Almost perfect. Remember, on these two guys, we're going to double that nose and climb to the back side. Okay? Because we're not blocking this guy. He's the read. Okay? All right, now. This is all well and good when you put it on the board. That's an awesome job, by the way. Thank you. Okay, this is all well and good when you put it on the board. And this is all what we call pre-snap. Okay, so this is what we're calling pre-snap. So we come up to the ball, and we look up, and that's how they're all lined up. Okay, and we look at them, and that's our pre-snap reads. This is who we would block based on where they're standing when we come to the line of scrimmage. Okay. Now, the problem with this is when you draw on the board, you score a touchdown every play, right? The problem is, is that all these guys get to move, okay? You, on offense, have to sit tight till the ball snap. They all get to move. So when we walk up pre-snap, that's where they're gonna be, okay? But once the ball snapped, there may not be there. Okay, so this is where you have to have that football knowledge that we're gonna work on to know who to pick up, okay? So what if this linebacker right here in their defense decides he's just gonna blitz right there? All right, so that puts a big question mark on this guy, right? Who do I block? I'm supposed to double the nose and climb for the backside backer, but we're gonna run the ball right there. Right? So do we just run the ball right there and just take the loss? No. So what we have to do is this guy, this guard, has to be smart enough to know, and we'll coach this when we're on the field, that when that guy comes hard like that, I gotta block him right there. My job just changed. That's called a post snap. <clears throat> okay. It's it's really easy if they just sit there and wait for us to come block them. But they're not going to do that. The other thing that's going to happen is, as soon as the quarterback turns this way and this tailback comes this way, this linebacker is going to move that way. Okay? So what may happen is, because now we can't climb, and this guy can't climb and pick him off, this guy who's just releasing may have to take him out of the play right there. All those things are what we, what we will teach you in motion on the field. In a classroom, it's important to know this stuff where everybody is and who you're supposed to get. Okay. But in actual movement, it's a completely different thing. So we always want to know who we have pre-snap and what happens post-snap. Okay, those are, those are two really big concepts that you have to understand. What we walk up and see may not be the same thing as what we're expecting. Okay. All right, the equal, the equal thing to do, are you baseball fans at all? No. No? No, what? That's America's <laughs> last time, man, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> all right. I was in a baseball game, and that was the longest game ever. It was the longest recorded game. I watched that game, and I was so bored. It was like 11 at night, and I was just like, I wanted to go to sleep. I have to admit that baseball for the younger generation, okay, all right, it's a harder game to watch because you guys are used to video games and everything happening so fast. Basketball thrown up down the court, football thrown all over the place. Baseball is a mental game. So, along with being a physical game. So is football, actually. So is basketball, you gotta know the mental side too. So in a baseball game, if you are hitting, okay, I'm standing at the plate and I'm hitting, 
and I'm expecting a pitcher to throw a fastball, I swing one way. But if I swing like it's a fastball and he throws a curveball, what happens? I miss. It's a strike. Okay. In football, the defense can throw curveballs. Okay, they're not always just going to line up and do what you expect them to do. They're going to do other stuff. Okay, to try to contain what we do. Okay. So, and that's what we will do on defense as well. We will do things to confuse the offense. So, why we need to go through all of this stuff is we need to know what all these people up here are doing. Okay, to clear to clear holes. Because what are we going to do? We said last week offensive offensive goals are to control the football so we can control the clock and make them play defense and get tired. Okay. Those are offensive goals. So when we look at this, we have to understand that while we draw it up on the board, it's probably never going to look like that in the game. Sometimes the hole's going to be over here and you're going to bend that thing out and go this way. Sometimes it's going to break back inside. It's going to break somewhere. Okay. Sometimes we're going to run in that hole and there's going to be a linebacker there that tackles us. That's how it works. Okay, so we have to be prepared for that. Okay, everybody understand pre-snap, post-snap. Mm -hmm. Great. So let's look at some other stuff. Okay. Now, what I told you last week is, is that you can have one of two types of offenses if you want to do it right. Now, if you're in the NFL, you have lots of formations and lots of plays. Okay? If you're in Division I college football, you can sometimes have lots of formations and lots of plays. Okay? If you're in high school, you have to kind of pick. You can either have a whole bunch of formations and few plays, or a, a bunch of plays out of one formation. I kind of like to have multiple formations and less plays. The reason for that is it's easier for you to, to understand the flow of how the play is going to work if you don't have to remember 45 plays. Okay? What we need to do as a football team when we come up to the line of scrimmage is it needs to be, we understand what we're doing right now. Right off the top of our head. We don't have to think about it. We've done enough reps in practice where when we step up and we run wing left 31 read, everybody knows what's happening. Everybody on the field. Who's, if you're the wide out, you know what the backside tight end is doing. If you're the quarterback, you know what the guards are doing. We all know because we've repped that so many times where, all right, it's getting boring in practice. We are doing wing left, 31 read again. Okay? But it's a, ma it's a matter of it becoming almost like mu mu uh, muscle memory. Okay? All right? To where it, I hear the words wing, wing left, 31 read. This is what I do. Okay? So it's important that we get to that point. And if, and if you have multiple, multiple, multiple plays, it's hard to do because we just have a limited amount of practice time. If you go play Division I football or you play in the NFL, they have all day, literally all day, to just have meetings like we're doing right now and then go out on the football field and do it for three hours. Or if you play Ralph Naked as Coach did, they did the same thing. Lots of film, lots of classwork, lots of get out on the field, and run a lot of plays. Okay, so we don't have that luxury. So to have a set number of plays that we know backwards and forwards out of different formations to be able to move the defense around, okay, <coughs> is important for us. The other thing that we have to do is we have to be able to run the ball in every hole. Okay, so we just hit the one and two hole, right? The reads. The reads go into the one and two hole. Now, if we always line up like this, and we always run the ball to that side, what's the defense going to do? Adjust. They're going to adjust. Very good. Okay. They're going to move. They're going to go, hey, they're wing right, or to them it's going to be a wing left. They're always going to call the strength of their defense to that side, right? So we have to be able to run out of this formation to the back side. Okay. Now, we could just say, hey, you know what? We're going to run wing right 31 read, which would be to put the wing over here and run the replay on this side. And we can do that. We will do that. Okay? But I wanted to take you through the next play, okay, in our progression. And everything in football has a progression. Okay? Everything, every play leads to another play. Okay? Just about every play you run 
has something that comes off of it that looks like it, but is different. Okay, it's a progression of plays. So what we want to do now is we want to run something that's called a counter. Okay? So this formation would be wing right. Thirty-one count. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run the ball to this side, but we're going to show like we want to run the ball to that side. Okay. So what we will do is this. We're going to do what we call a trap. Okay. We're going to trap this. I got to remember how I wrote. I drew this up the first time too. Make sure I do this the way I decided I wanted to do it. We're going to call it 33 count. Okay. So we're going to break it back. Actually, it's too Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to line up and make it look like we're going to run this way. But in actuality, what we're going to do is we're going to run the ball on the back side. So how are we going to do that? Okay. Well, we're going to make it look just like we do when we run read. We're going to double the nose. This is the nose guard. And we're going to climb to the backside back. Okay, we're going to do that. Only now we are going to take this this tight end and we're going to go down on that back right there. Okay. All right. This guy is just going to come in here and try to seal somebody off, and always the Y out is pretty much in this sort of thing going to block the corner. Okay. Because what's going to eventually happen is this corner is going to be there with our wide out, and at some point he's going to think we're blocking him, and we're going to do this and throw that guy the ball. Okay, that's the next progression when we start throwing the ball. Okay, but for this play, we're calling this 31, 33 count. So what's going to happen is the quarterback is going to step back and going to hand the ball off to this guy who's going to run through here. Okay, to the tailback. Thirty. Okay. Now, we got to block this guy, right? Because right, now he's in the hole. So how are we going to do that? We're going to pull this guard, and he's going to kick him out. Okay. We're going to pull that guard. So everything that we do in this play to start is going to look like we're running 31 read, or, or 32 read. So the quarterback's going to step here, going to hand the ball off, going to make it look just like it, except for what they don't know is that we're blocking it differently, okay? And this front side guard is now coming back to take that guy out, which is a beautiful thing when it happens, okay? Because this guy all of a sudden says, this guy didn't block me, he released, I'm gonna step down. And before he gets his helmet turned around to see where who somebody's coming from, this guy right here is being very unfriendly to him, okay? So, and then the ball goes right behind him, okay? Now, we're not accounting for the cornerback or the free safety in this particular case because we're hoping that they're sliding, got their eyes in the backfield, which is a big number when you do that, okay? Remember, what we're trying to do is stay on par. Now, do we want that play to break for a touchdown every time we run it? Absolutely. But what we really want to do is get four yards, okay? Because we want to control the clock. We want both. Okay, but we want to get a minimum of four yards because we get first downs, we make them play def defense, they get tired, and we end up running, running them into the ground while we rest. Okay, which is what we want because this game is going to take a lot of running around. Okay, so this is called a counter. Okay, that means that we are running the ball opposite of where they think we're going to run. It's counter. Okay, it's counter to what they think. So this would be wing right thirty three count. Okay. Want to see that one? Cool. Yes, sir. Okay. Good. All right. Let's look at another one. And we're throwing in a bunch of offense today. All right. I guess I should pull all these out because I've got them all the way I want them. So we can run that to the back side. Okay. We can run that to the back side just like we ran the other one. So organized. Remember, Taylor being disorganized. All right. 
All right, we are also going to run option. Okay. Now, when I was in high school, 157 years ago, okay, the team that I played for, we ran the wishbone. Okay. Which means that you got everybody all in tight, and you got three backs in the backfield, and you just jammed it down people's throats, and then you ran option. Now, option is when both the quarterback and the running back can keep the ball. Okay? So, one of these guys is going to end up with the ball. Okay? So we're drawing everything up against the three front, which has three guys in it, just for general purposes today. They don't have to play a three front. They can play whatever they want. They can have two guys, four guys, whatever they want. But we'll have blocking rules in place to be able to deal with that. So we're going to run option, which means that somebody over here is not getting blocked. Okay? And that guy's going to always be wrong. Just like a read, except that this goes outside. Okay? This goes outside. So what we're going to do is we are going to try to option this guy. Okay. Now, if you're playing cornerback, okay, this is no slander to cornerbacks, but you're probably not the most physical guy on the field. Okay, you're out there to kind of cover the wide out, make a tackle here and there if you can. Okay, and you're probably not a big guy like these guys in here. These guys are going to be much more physical, much more demanding positions on defense. This guy's like fast. You know, he can run, he can catch, he can do all the stuff that this guy does, and he doesn't really like to get that dirty. So we want to make him wrong, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to snap the ball, and we're going to block back, and we're not going to block him, okay? But we're going to block everybody else, okay? And this is where this guy right here gets to have some fun, okay? Because that guy is going to come down and block this back. He's going to seal that edge. In other words, when we're running to the side, we want to seal the edge. He's going to block that back. Okay? Now, if you're that guy right there, and this guy watches these two guys turn and go like this, where's he going to move? He's going this way, right? Now, what's he looking at? He's looking at what's going on up here, right? He's not looking at that guy. Because, first of all, this guy's probably not the best blocker on the team. He's just a wide out. But... That guy's getting ready to do some unfriendly things to that linebacker, too, when we run option. Okay? Because that guy's going to turn around and see whoever's blocking him right there on him. Okay? Now, that doesn't have to be a big, giant block. That just has to contain that guy. And we'll teach you how to stalk block a guy, where you break down and get in front of him, and just kind of keep him out of the way. It doesn't, blocking doesn't always have to be a big, giant hit on somebody. Does that happen? Yes. Most of the time, blocking is the way that today's game is played is getting in the way of somebody. Okay? You're just getting in somebody's way so they can't make the play. Okay? We're going to block down with these guys. See that one? Here, here, here. This guy's going out. You can see who he can get in trouble with. And these two guys are literally going to take the ball and run right at that guy. Okay? They're going to run right at that cornerback. Now, why, why are they going to do that? Because this guy can make a tackle. Quarterback's got the ball. He's running right at that cornerback, and the tailback is running basically a couple yards apart right beside him. Because what's going to happen? This guy has to decide, am I going to tackle the quarterback, which we hope he does. Okay, because he's going to try to come up and tackle here, and the quarterback's going to pitch the ball there. Who's left? The free safety is probably the only guy that can make that play. Okay, if we block him. Now remember, these guys, these guys are trying real hard too, and they've been coached. Okay, so that's option. We call it option because we decide who runs the ball. Both the quarterback and the tailback have the opportunity to possess the ball and run. Have you ever seen um, Navy play football? Okay, Navy runs the option all the time. Now they run triple option, which is a totally different bird, but they still run an option where they pull the ball, they run down the line, and they pitch it. And they're always trying to make somebody wrong. This guy's the guy we're gonna make wrong on this play. Okay, so this is wing right. Option. Okay. 
because we got three back heading to six hole. Now it could be 16, because quarterback's number one, right? So it could be 16, but we're gonna call it 36 to stay with the number scheme. So it's easy to remember. Now all we're doing is subtly changing the blocking in the front, but we're really not changing, changing much in the way we run the ball, okay? For example, this is a guy we don't block in the read, right? Now all of a sudden he's getting blocked. He doesn't know what's going on, okay? He, sometimes he's getting blocked, sometimes he's not getting blocked. This guy right here, okay, sometimes he's getting double teamed, sometimes he's getting blocked down on him. We, don't, we want him to always be guessing what's going to happen next. So when that guy gets down in his stance and he gets down there and he's looking ahead, he doesn't know who's coming to hit him, who's coming to block him. I don't know who's coming from where. Okay, we want them wondering what's going to happen next on defense. That's really what our goal is. We want them to start thinking instead of what we're doing when we come to the ball and we line up, okay? We know where we're going, we're used to it, we do it so many times and we just do it. We want them wondering, all right, what are they gonna do next? I want this guy to go to the, go to the sideline and tell his coach, I don't know who's blocking me. Okay, that's what I want, okay? That's what we want, okay? Because we want them confused. Again, we make everything look pretty much the same but then we do different stuff. So now we've hit, we've hit the one and two hole, we've hit with the uh, counters, we've hit three and five, or three and four, and with option, we're gonna hit six and seven. Okay, so we can run to the strong side, okay, or to the weak side with any of these, okay? All right. Like I said, we're doing lots of offense tonight. So let's take a look at one more. So that's option. Okay? You fill in your head to all kinds of stuff. All two of them. All right, so what are these? Option. Counter. Counter. Let's get these working out real quick. Let's do quality coaching right here. We're Prepared. All right, so this is called a power play. Okay, this is power. Now, I really like this. <clears throat> Probably as much as I like any play that we're going to run. Again, I'm drawing up pre-snap stuff, which is to our, our, advantage, our advantage. So this is going to be point right. Now, power in football refers to basically any time where there's a blocker that runs in front of the back through the hole. Okay, that's that's basically what power means. Uh, in the old days, we when you had two backs in the backfield, we ran things that were called ISOs. We still there's still people that still run ISOs, but we call this power. Now we call this power because there's going to be a guard that pulls and leads up through the hole. Okay. So we're running the three back through the four hole, which is basically right there. Okay, So he's going to run up through there. Now, this is a slower developing play because we need time to let this guard get where he needs to go. So let's see how we block this. We double and climb and try to seal that guy out. Okay, This guy's going to get up in here to make sure that backer doesn't come through the backside. All right, and this guard is going to pull and get that back. Okay, he's going to pull up through there and get the back. Okay, wide ass can block the corner. All right, so this tailback has got to slide. We call it slide, gather, and go. So he's got to step, stop, and then go because we need that guy to get around in the hole before him. So the quarterback has to take a little drop step and hand off here, and the ball goes there. Again, the blocking scheme up front stays very, very similar, but what we do with certain people changes where, how the defense has to react to the way we play. Okay? I like to run power. Now, can this guy make the play over here? If he, sees that guard pull and tries to get down in here, 
He can. Okay? But this tight end, what would his job be then? Pick that guy up. Seal that guy off. Okay? Pre snap, post snap. Okay? Pre snap and post snap. Make sense? You still with me? You good? I'm packing a lot of stuff in tonight offensively so we can we can get that done. Because I'm not going to see you for a couple of weeks after tonight. All right. So pre-snap, post-snap. Tight end's got to make a, make a decision on this guy because this guy can make the play back there because it's slow development. Then the quarterback's going to step back and he's going to come back here, okay, instead of just boom, read, okay. He's got to take a step back and come back because we need to clear out for that guard to pull. All right. Good? Mm -hmm. All right. You ready for the last one? Yes, sir. All right. So now I'm going to show you one other thing. We're going to be pretty close to being done. All right. Good old fashioned sweep play. Okay. Just a good old fashioned sweep. All right. Let's take a look at it. This is going to be wing right. So this is supposed to go real wide, okay? And we're going to pick on that cornerback again. Let's draw up the nose, tackle, tackle, backer, backer, corner, corner. All right. So what we're going to do now is this is really, really simple. It's going to look a lot like it's going to look a lot like power. And it's going to look a lot like option, but it's not. It's sweep. So what we're going to do is this. Everybody blocks back. Okay, We're going to try to hook this guy. He's getting the backer. Okay, Right there, right there. Try to get up the field a little bit. Seal off here. Okay, All we're really going to do is this guy's going to reverse out. We're going to pitch in the ball. Okay. Now, we're not blocking this guy, right? So what's the running back's job? What's his job? Catch the ball, but we're not blocking this guy, right? So what's his job? Beat that one guy. Okay, when we run a play like this, we're saying this guy right here is better than your guy. Okay, so let's say that we roll up on a team that has a cornerback Oh, you know what? I'm going to do that. We're going to pull on the sweep, and the guard's going to go get the corner. My bad. I, I looked at it both ways today when I was thinking about how I want to do this. Okay? We're going to pull that guard, and we're going to go get that corner. Okay? I thought about doing it both ways today, and I decided that we're going to pull. Because I want these guys to get more involved up front. So... Wing right 38 sweep, again, we make it look just like everything else we do, but we're attacking a different place on the field. Okay? We're going to go over all these a thousand times, so don't be too worried about it if it's not stuck in your head yet. Obviously, the, the sweep was still not stuck in my head, and I was messing with it today. All right, so let's look at one other thing. We got a light number tonight, so we're gonna, not going to probably take the whole time. All right, so different formation, okay? This is heavy. Okay, that's heavy. All right, now this would be heavy right. Now, tell me what's the difference between that and wing. Uh, uh, what's different from wing? That guy is going to be there. Okay, what guy? Uh, this guy? The wing guy, yeah. Okay, we're calling this heavy right, but the wing's on the left. Okay, so when we look at our offensive line right now, this guy's a center. This guy's a guard. What's this guy? 
He's a tight end. Very good. Alright, so what's this guy? Tight end. Hello? Guard? He's another guard. We, we, what we've done is we've taken both the guards and moved them to one side. Then call that a heavy. Now, why would we do that? Well, we're doing it to move the defense. Okay, so if I'm playing defense and I look up at our wing formation, let's put that up there. Okay. So here's Wayne. This is heavy down here. And I'm playing defense, where do I line up? Okay, so the nose guard is always going to think I line up there, tackles there, tackles there. Backers are here, they don't catch it right away. Corner, corner, two safeties. Now, what does that do for us? What does that do for us? Spaces up the field? Well, that's a good thought. Okay. Can we run 32 read out of that? Yes. Okay. Because it's the same, right? same play. It's just a different formation. Okay. It's, it's just a different formation. Now it's harder. Okay. Because who's going to block that guy? Alright. Somebody's got to get there and hit that guy because we're going to leave this guy. Alright. But we change the way we look up front. Is it a big change? Not really. Can we run motion across the formation this way? We can. We may, in fact, add that in once once we get comfortable with what we do. Okay. We will use this formation as well. That's heavy. Okay. It's heavy because there's three guys on this side of the line of scrimmage that are on the line of scrimmage. Okay. It's what's called an unbalanced line. wing when you look at our wing formation how many guys are on that side of the center two two how many guys are on this side of the center three two well he's off the ball so he doesn't count two two, two. okay on the line of scrimmage in this formation in heavy how many people are on this side of the line of scrimmage three three and how many are on the other side one one one. So do we have an advantage in running to this side? Yes. Yeah, because we have more people out there to block. Now, it looks kind of similar to our wing, but it's totally different when you're on defense looking at it and having to deal with who's blocking who. Okay? Simple little change. We're playing, running essentially the same plays out of a different formation. Very simple little change. Who's got questions about what we're talking about? Um, I think it's all pretty straightforward right now, no? Um, it is all pretty straightforward. I mean, if I might have to do like post snap, but I mean, we'll work on it. Okay, one of the hard things with playing football for the first time is going to be reacting. Okay, so if you've never played in a live football game before, and, and Trey, I know you have, but Wes, what's going to happen initially is you're going to be going to where you think the guy's going to be, and he's not going to be there. Okay, to block somebody. Okay, so you're going to go thinking, well, we drew it up on the board, and that linebacker's supposed to be right there, and I'm going to take off. 
and that guy's not going to be there. So you got to find that, and then once you figure that out in your mind and where people are moving, it's like basketball. You play basketball. Okay, when you set picks and you roll off of picks, or if you uh, you in a motion offense where guys are going away and replacing themselves, <coughs> when you're trying to defense those sort of things, if you're playing man, you got to stay right with that guy everywhere he goes. And you might get picked, that guy might roll, and you might have to switch, right? There are times if you're playing man, you have to switch. It's the same thing with blocking. It's the same thing with blocking. The guys are going to move, and there are going to be times where you're going to have to switch. You're going to have to, it's the same general purpose, okay? Up front, there'll be blocking assignments, but those blocking assignments stop just as soon as the ball snapped because they're going to move, right? So I'm going to, the easy one is this guy. The guy who snaps the ball has usually got somebody over his head. Okay, now if he doesn't, then his job becomes more complicated. Usually, when you have somebody who's right on top of you, worst case scenario, you just block that dude, okay? What, I'm, what you will hear me say a million times during the course of the season will be make aggressive mistakes. Okay? What you never want to do on a football field is go, I don't know what to do, so I'm not doing anything. I'm just kind of standing there trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. My guy wasn't there and I stopped. What? Where's my guy? I'll go find another guy. There's, there's seven other ones to pick from. So in a football game, make aggressive mistakes. That's, that's a big one. Make an aggressive mistake. Go. If, if my guy's not there, go find somebody who's wearing a different color jersey and block that guy. Okay? The other thing that you always want to think about, and this is true in any sport, is make one mistake, not two. Okay? So you've made a mistake. Don't compound it by doing something else that's a second mistake. Like, I miss my guy, or my guy's not where he's supposed to be, so I need to go, don't stop, go get somebody else. Okay? Make aggressive mistakes. And only make one mistake at a time. You're gonna make mistakes, we all do. I'm gonna make mistakes, but Chad's gonna make mistakes. We're gonna be on the sideline, we're gonna call a bad play for a bad situation. Or we're gonna get caught in something on defense where they score. Happens. That's, that's, they're trying really hard, we're trying really hard. People, that, it happens. That's, that's what makes it a game. If we just rolled out there and you know went out there and just steamrolled them every, every week, that'd be fun for the first two weeks. And then after that, we'd be like, hey, is anybody gonna play football with us anymore? Okay, because it's getting kind of old. It's not much of a game. Okay? Nobody wants to watch a 75 to nothing game. You know? Nobody wants to, you know, it's fun for the first time. But after that, it's like, yeah, whatever. Okay? Somebody come play us. Same thing if you're playing basketball. You know, you want to beat everybody 120? Yeah, it's fun for the first couple of games. But after that, where's the competition in that? Where's the joy in that competition? There's no competition. So those guys are going to try real hard too. Okay. So you're going to make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. Okay? So pre-snap, post-snap is a big deal. Pre-snap, I know who I've got. I'm standing right here. I know I'm supposed to go block that guy. But when we snap the ball and that guy runs that way, what do I do? Do I chase him? What do I do? Okay, that's what happens when you start to feel how to play football. Just like you instinctively know how to play basketball. You know the things to do with your body because you've been doing it for a long time. You know, you know when to drop step, you know what to do, okay? Same thing in football. Once you acquire that knowledge in your mind and it becomes second nature to you, then you just do it, okay? You, you'll see Coach Hatton in practice, or me and Hat in, in practice demonstrating something that we just do naturally because we were coached for such a long time to do certain things with our body when things happen, okay? So you'll, you'll develop that as, as well. And that's the hardest transition going from pre-snap to post-snap. What we think is going to happen and what actually happens is generally two different things. Okay. Again, if it went just exactly the way I drew it up on the board every time, we would never not score a touchdown. Every play would score a touchdown. Every play doesn't score a touchdown. So you'll get there. We just got that's that's a practice thing. That's a put yourself on the field, start doing stuff, start being coached in the way you're supposed to move and the things you're supposed to do, and you'll pick it right up. Because you're an athlete. Athletes pick it right Okay, so there's no problem whatsoever. A big part of that post-snap stuff is communicating too. Yep. You know, if that guy, that linebacker's stepping up, getting ready to blitz, if I'm that guard and I don't say anything, you know, how are they supposed to know that I'm not picking up my guy I'm supposed to be? 
you know, you gotta communicate to everyone saying, you know, there'll be some calls, some alert deal that I'm blocking this guy that's right in front of me, not doing what, you know, quote unquote I'm supposed to be doing, if that makes sense. So a lot of it, 90% communication. Yep. And we will, you have to talk. The same is true on defense. You've got to talk to one another. It's terrible when you get to the line of scrimmage and nobody knows what else to do. Okay, so we have to communicate with one another. That one, the one play where the, our wide receiver's coming back down to crack the, uh, the linebacker, I've been there before playing that linebacker. If that corner doesn't talk to you, you're having a rough day and you have a lot of not nice words to say to the corner because you don't know what's happening. If the corner sees that happen and yells crack, well now you know to look out for this guy that's coming to block you and trying to blindside you. So. Yep. I've cracked a few times myself. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover tonight. Now we're not getting back together until July the second. Okay, we're going to start going out a little bit. Hopefully, the rest of the guys will start getting their, their families here. I know uh, Mike will be back, Gabe and Isaiah will be back, and then I'm going to get in touch with the other guys and see if we can't get all this stuff worked out. Because we got plenty of time to know July 2nd is our next time to get together. So we'll go out and start doing a few things just out in the yard here. We'll start working on some technique kind of stuff. Okay, they're going to be way far behind the curve from where you guys are. So we're going to bring them along pretty quick. Uh, we're going to give out equipment on July the 23rd. That's the last Tuesday night we'll be together, so we'll have all of our equipment by then. We'll then give everybody their equipment and send you on your merry way that night because practice starts August 1st. Okay, so we'll be ready to go. Parents, do you have any kind of questions or anything? Hmm. I'm trying to keep these things intentionally brief. We could go for three, four hours, but I, I want to make sure you guys get what you need, think about it a little bit. And, and so you can digest it a little bit. Okay? Y'all feel good? Yes, sir. All right, let's go home. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Good job today. Good job. Frank, good job today. Thank you, sir. Thanks for being with us. We'll be all right. The, the okay. biggest joke in coaching is the first thing you learn is how to do draw squares and circles. <laughs> That's right. Draw them in the right place, too. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know, I introduced Tommy Bowden at an uh, event. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, sure did. I had, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk with him about uh, coming to football. Uh, yeah, some pretty good teams. Unfortunately, they went undefeated that one year. Unfortunately, they were on probation. Yeah. yeah. No. But we won two, two uh, national championships. Are you a Clemson fan? Oh, yeah, I'm a Clemson fan. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah. I coach one of my, one of my really good friends that went to the Clemson National Class. He played at Clemson. He was a uh, coach of Lafayette High School in Gainesburg. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, he was head coach of Iraq for a while for the Woodford. Uh, and had a ton of three men and one of the best people I had all at the same time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I came up here. Thank you.